Hello and welcome to Shep Rambles, where I am Shep and I tend to ramble about what? Anything and everything. And today we're going to ramble about those little computerized stand up tabletop little tablet uh, computerized little things that happen to be on those little restaurant tables and why they suck. <laughs> In some ways, they seem like they're convenient because you can pay your bill right there and it automatically can figure out the tip and everything but at, at the same time they are hurting uh, your server your waiter waitresses they don't really call them waiters or waitresses anymore um, they're mainly called servers I guess that's the politically correct term whatever <clears throat> but this story uh, comes out of Dayton, Ohio, and it's in regards to a waitress, I'm not politically correct, <laughs> uh, her name is Nicole Bishop, and she waits tables at a restaurant called the Smoky Bones Restaurant. So let me just show you here. This, this is Dayton. And this is the Smoky Bones, which you can't see because my face is covering it. That's the Smoky Bones right here. All right. There's the sign, Smoky Bones. Just ha it, and there's competition. All right. So there's the El Toro Mexican Barn Grill right here. There's Outback. Um, you know, Goodwill. That that's competition. No, not really. Oh, <laughs> Skyline Chili. Yes. Not really. I, I make better Cincinnati chili. My Cincinnati chili is better. I make it homemade. Skyline, they just use packets and stuff. now. They're not as good as they used to be. Um, yeah, but this is uh, Dayton, Ohio. It's looks like it might rain. Was that a Golden Corral down there? Yeah. Oh. Steak and Shake! Man, I love Steak and Shake. Steak and Shake's awesome. Alright, and as far as their, their menu, see, I, I come prepared, man. Uh, you can see they got wings, barbecue, burgers, fire starters, chicken and seafood, fire grill favorites, salad soup, sandwiches, donuts. Um... All kinds of stuff. So this just kind of gives you an idea of what what this restaurant what this restaurant has. Okay. All right. So these little tabletop little tablets they're called Zeosks. Um, and the coal she you know when they introduce these things, not every restaurant has them, but when they introduce introduce them on, at this restaurant, she wasn't too worried about them at first. Um, they're designed to increase restaurant eff efficiency by allowing customers to order drinks, appetizers, and desserts and pay their bill from the table without talking to a server. Okay, yeah, I can see how, how that's efficient. Um, I would agree. I think it takes away from the, um, the, the, the human element, the, uh, you know, the relationship between you and the person that, you know, is, is serving you. Um... It, it it takes that away, but it, it does make it more um, efficient. That's for sure. Um, but as she as she soon discovered that <clears throat> they are also prompting customers to take a satisfaction survey at the end of, uh, and at the end of every meal, and this the results of it are turned into a score that's used to evaluate the server's performance. Now, one day, not long after these little Zeosks appeared, um, Nicole, she's a single mom who balances waitressing with raising her six-year-old son <clears throat> and a second job <clears throat> in a legal office. She went to the kitchen to check on her schedule. And she looks at her schedule, and she's like, what the heck, where's all my shifts? And 
this this article is coming from BuzzFeed News. So she told BuzzFeed News this, and her normal schedule was four days a week, and they had been cut down to just two days a week. And this change, she figured, is going to cost her two hundred to four hundred dollars a week, and that's a you know that's a pretty big chunk of change right there, you know, especially for someone who has to work two shifts just to make ends meet. And and the restaurant was like, oh, well, you had a bad score. She's like, well, that's my car payment. That's bills. And, you know, without that money, she's having to play catch up for the rest of the month and hoping that, you know, another, no other uh, bills or emergencies ha have to uh, pop up. <clears throat> now, there's another person. Um... Felicia Hearn, and this is also at the Smoky Bones uh, uh, restaurant, this is in Illinois, her scores dropped. She, uh, there was a cut, uh, there was a table that was cut from her section, and that costed her 30 and, between 30 and $40 a night. And then there is a chili server um, his name's Steve, and dropping scores meant he was getting stuck working in the kitchen where he struggled to make uh, San Francisco Bay Area rent on less than half what he'd made as, as a server. So it's not just, oh, well, yeah, there are servers here. And then there's Julia, um, who just wanted to be identified by her first name only. I can understand that, you know. You know, watch one of my earlier uh, Shep Rambles episodes when I talk about freedom of speech, where I say, like, nothing is really free anymore because even though you go to speak your mind, um, someone else out there is like, oh, I don't agree with what you have to say. And then they just get, ri you know, they fire you or, you know, whatever. You know, you're not free to speak your mind anymore, it seems. Uh, anyway, uh, she's been working at this Olive Garden for four years. And then her managers just stopped scheduling her after their, a series of low Zia scores. And then Elisa, she quit her job at a Chili's in Texas after it started giving servers with low scores less prime shifts. In other words, shifts that suck. <laughs> and the difference... Uh, was well over a hundred dollars to walking out with 70 bucks and then there's Catherine who works at an Olive Garden in California where the servers were recently told consistently that low scores could lead to write-ups and if we get more than three write-ups in a certain amount of time we get terminated in addition to taking college classes two days a week to become a kindergartner garden teacher Catherine is raising a four-year-old son with the help of her family. When she goes into work every day and looks at her score, it, it's nerve-wracking. She's just like, you know, she's like scared. No one should have to feel like that when they go into work. I mean, you know, you, you go to work because you, you got to pay bills and stuff. I mean, that's not fun. <clears throat> now, I know some of you are thinking, it's like, well, you know, maybe you should... Uh, do your job well well that's not the point the point is is that they're doing the best they can there's more there's more to this story <clears throat> so um keep listening all right so these zeos tablets they sit on these dining tables and there's over f uh 4500 of them on, in restaurants they're mostly at chili's and olive gardens tgi fridays red robins um, there are competitor tablets. They're like Presto Prime tablets, and those are mostly like an Applebee's. And tens of thousands of servers are being evaluated based on a tech-driven, data-oriented customer feedback system that many people are saying are inaccurate and unfair. And few of the customers holding the reins are even aware that their responses have any impact on how much servers are earning. 
So these two companies, Ziosk and Presto, Presto, sit at the nexus of two major consumer trends. The idea that every product, service, piece of content and interaction, whether encountered online or in real life, should be rated on a scale of one to five, and that these ratings and aggregate become an invaluable data set helping managers achieve growth and make money. <clears throat> It makes very literal the idea that the customer is always right to the complete disregard of the worker. Um, technologies like Ziosk are attractive to the restaurant industry, which faces a rising minimum wage because the tablets promise to make workers more efficient and in turn lower labor costs. But in interviews with BuzzFeed News, more than two dozen current <coughs> and former Servers describe Ziosk as a source of financial and emotional anxiety, a vector of discrimination and harassment in the workplace, and an added layer to the economic and psychological precariousness that already defines restaurant work. Yeah, I've I've done server work before. Yeah, it's <clears throat> it's uh it's very taxing. It really is. And here's an example of a, a Ziosk right here, just in case you're wondering what, what this is about. <clears throat> so when they introduced them, it seemed like it was a good deal for the customer, but as a server, it's just the worst thing ever, um, says Sam Ellis, who works at a Chili's in Texas. That's all your job depends on is these survey scores. Here's one question. What do you think of the speed of service during this visit? Now you may be thinking, Oh, well, you know, it took a while for my meal to get to me. Well, that may not be the server's fault. That could be the fault of the kitchen. So you may be like, well, okay, well, it was good. You know, you may not be someone that's like, well, you know, it. not everything is always perfect, right? So, you know, it's like, okay, well, it was good. It was good. But believe it or not, this stuff affects the server whether the server has anything to do with it or not and, and get this so ZS scores are tabulated as an average of out of five stars and on the device it says four out of five stars means it's satisfied but anything less than perfect drags the score down and has the potential to hurt the server the company only counts fives as good scores and no one's perfect so you may be thinking Oh, well, yeah, it was perfect. I didn't get it in two minutes. So it wasn't excellent. But they got it in a good amount of time, so you push good. Well, they get dinged for that. Now, you tell me that sucks, all right? Because these dings are costing people hours um, and money, and in some cases their job, because of a st stupid computerized tablet that's sitting on on the table I when I found this article I was I was blown away I didn't even I knew about these things on the table but I didn't know the whole back background behind it I I was I was totally blown away when when I when I found this article and when I saw this I'm like I got to do a video I got to do a video I got to let I gotta let my viewers know because this is just crap um, so yeah so this guy here works at the Uno Pizzeria and Grill says the company only counts fives as good scores everything else is basically a complaint uh, here's a tweet and it says I feel like it, it should be put on the Ziosk if you give this server less than five even though a three is normal they get fired yeah <laughs> satisfied should not be considered a bad score but that drops you down 10% immediately and that's coming from an Ohio based server who who's worked at two restaurants that use Ziosk no servers who spoke with BuzzFeed News said they were outright fired over low scores but sometimes the scores put them in, in an untenable limbo, earning less than before and never quite sure whether hours would be cut or tables taken away. It was hard to know whether it was time to start looking for a new job. And then there's a different server uh, who worked at a Chili's said servers with high ZS scores were protected, while servers with low scores were more likely to be fired for a small mistake. 
It just makes it easy for them to target you and write you up and get you fired. Um, local uh, managers at Chili's reached for comment on this story to Clyde the comment or directed uh, BuzzFeed News to contact Chili's corporate office. <laughs> Managers like, I just work here. Um, Brinker International, uh, which owns and operates Chili's, declined to comment on this story. Of course, of course they did. Um, they they don't want to fess up to, to all this stuff. Local Uno Pizzeria and Grill Manager directed BuzzFeed News to contact its or corporate office, which also didn't respond to it. Of course not. You know, why would the corporate office want to take accountability for all this crap? I don't know, corporate office. You want to answer that question? How come you won't take accountability for this crappy-ass technology that's costing people's jobs? Which is being unfair. Huh? Tell me that. Yeah. Um, other restaurants, such as Applebee's, they use this franchise model and said they couldn't speak to the operational policies of franchises. Um, Olive Garden managers direct a request for comment regarding Zios to Darden restaurants. The corporation that operates Olive Garden. Darden declined to make an executive available, of course, but said in a statement that its goal is always to deliver a flawless experience for each of our guests. Nothing's perfect. Nothing is perfect. Nothing is flawless. Okay, we're all human beings. When are corporations going to realize that? They're not. Because, ah, oh, man, corporations piss me off. <sighs> blah, blah. Ziosk is just one tool among many others we use to measure how we are doing and provide feedback to our servers to enhance the overall guest experience. Okay, I get it. I get it as far as a survey thing. So don't rig this stuff to hurt your employees. Use, use it for what it was meant to be used for as a survey to get information about how things are going. You know, if you want to get comments, just like there's comments um, in the video, like in, in, in YouTube and, and for this video, I have there's comments in this video section so that way people can tell me hey I like this video no this video sucks oh you should do this you should do that don't do this don't do that hey it's feedback for me so that way I know like hey I should do more of this or I should do less of this these surveys that's that's what they should be used for not for getting someone fired or or, or getting them to where they're not making as much money, where they can't pay their bills. Use them for what they're meant for. Not sit there and, and use them for manipulation. Corporations are evil. Um, Smoky Bones Corporate Office didn't, didn't return a request for comment. Of course not. Um, but a local restaurant manager who has to remain anonymous... Uh, good said the way the chain uses the Ziosk system it is unfair to servers whom he said can lose shifts and eventually even be terminated for consistently low scores well thank goodness someone spoke up good for him or her um sadly again the whole freedom of speech thing that i was telling you about requested that he remain nameless so he doesn't lose his job if you haven't seen my video in regards to the whole freedom of speech thing, check out my other videos for Chef Rambles and and uh, and watch that one, because um, <clears throat> there's another article that I go over in uh, in regards to freedom of speech, and I really, 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 um, it's not it's not so much the article uh, that I want you guys to for the reason why I want you guys to watch the video. But it's because I want to get your comments. Uh, I want to get your thoughts um, and and stuff. So that's why I, I'm really hoping you guys will watch that video. Because I want to get some feedback from you on what you guys think. Um, so uh, Sam Ellis, 
Oh, wait a minute. Uh, here is saying the way the scoring system works is flawed. The only way they can get a good score is if someone puts highly satisfied. Unless they get that, they don't get a good score. I think that's flawed and it needs to be changed. Um, technically, they don't fire you, said Sam Ellis, who worked at Chili's with his wife. But they give you such bad shifts and they start cutting back your shifts to where you don't have enough to survive. Now, in case you're wondering, bad shift, that just doesn't necessarily mean like, oh, bad hours, you just need to be flexible. No, no. Keep in mind that there are prime shifts at a restaurant where there's a lot of customers. That means good tips. And then there are sucky hours at a restaurant where there's not a whole lot of business, which means you don't get a whole lot of tips. And keep in mind that servers rely on tips because they're only making like uh, a buck and a half to, to $2 an hour. You know, it, it it's crap. They don't make minimum wage. That's what their wage is. They have to depend on tips to bring everything else in. Uh, he says a good server in the big section who was sent home early due to low ZS scores would probably lose 40 to $50 a night. While a server who was bounced from working weekend nights to a Monday lunch could lose between $100 and $200. They basically force you out. A year and a half after Ellis started working at Chili's, he and his wife quit. Uh, in a Facebook post, Whitney warned friends and neighbors that the ratings they provided in a Zios survey could, unbeknownst to them, be causing your server to lose shifts and ultimately their job. Before she quit, Whitney Ellis tried to explain all of this to customers while on the job. I would tell them that if you paid on the Zios, that there would be a survey at the end, and the five stars is what I really need, she told BuzzFeed News. They were really surprised when I told them that. Also surprising to customers is the fact that survey questions that have seemingly nothing to do with a server's duties, like how well their food was prepared, are factored into a server's overall ratings. Restaurant brands, not Ziosk itself, set the questions on the device, which means they can vary widely. Some common questions across restaurants include, how likely would you be to return to this restaurant? How would you rate the cleanliness of this restaurant? And how likely would you be to recommend this restaurant to a friend? Like, how are those three questions directly related to the server? Maybe indirectly, but directly related to that server? They're not. But do you do you see where you see how do you see the depth of this? So every question on there is so impactful on the server. Reading the questions, you would never think you're affecting your server. At one point, he recalled his score was dinged because the customer wanted Fireball Cinnamon Whiskey, which Chili's doesn't serve. A guest could order a medium rare burger, and if it's cooked medium, they could rate me a four. That's literally not my job. I'm not a cook. I'm a server. Uh, and then there's Brittany, who serves at Chili's in the Midwest. Meanwhile, the customers have given her a low rating because of problems with the plumbing in her restaurant. It cost her a few shifts, so that was less money. And she's got three kids, and she needs all the money she can get. Another server um, said customers who took the Zios survey at her restaurant are asked how likely they are to return to the restaurant, and managers use that answer to set server schedules. I've actually had people who have given me all fives on my service because of the food quality or the or the po ho poor hosts. They have given a two on the intent to return. You can give great service all day long, but if someone doesn't have great food, the person probably isn't going to come back. It is frustrating that our money is affected and we're judged on our quality based on areas out of our control. Um, and then Brittany, a server from Ohio, said the Zios threshold set by the Smoky Bones where she worked seemed arbitrary. When Zios came into play, the corporate office told our management team, if your servers aren't getting 70% or higher, you're going to cut their shifts. I could be the best server in the world, but if my score for the quality of food or the host aren't over 70%, I lose my shift. I feel like that's not fair. It's not fair. You don't have to feel like it. It's not. It, that's, that's just plain fact. It's not fair. Um, today, consumers rate individual workers all the time. 
They dole out stars to task rabbits, to Lyft, Uber drivers, Postmates, DoorDashers. They rate their teachers and their doctors and their lawyers. And as of this spring, they've been able to rate more of their servers than ever. Um, so systems like Zias and Presto allow customers to channel frustrations that would otherwise end up on public platforms like Yelp, which can make or break a restaurant, into a closed system that the restaurant controls. This protects the business and gives them access to valuable data, but also effectively puts the customer in a position of evaluating and effectively managing their servers. Making consumers the boss has its drawbacks. Customers who might discriminate against a certain class or group of workers can use a system to leave negative comments that would affect the workers. Um, said Cornell's Ai Junhua. I'm sorry if I butchered that. She compared the restaurant system to student evaluations of professors, which determine the trajectory of their careers and tend to be biased against women. And Zios could be a roundabout way for employers to discriminate against employees. Employers are legally restricted from evaluating employees based on gender, age, race, or appearance, according to Karen Levy, an assistant professor in the Department of Information Science at Cornell University. But nothing is stopping Ziosk users from doing that, even though those ratings can affect a worker's pay or employment. If you outsource that job to a consumer, you may be able to escape that. Having low scores posted for all coworkers to see was very embarrassing, um, said Steph Bouja, who recently left her job as a server at Chili's. But that's not the only way customers, perhaps inadvertently, use the tablets to humiliate waitstaff. One diner at Bouja's Chili's used Zios to comment, our waitress has small boobs. Really? According to other servers working in Ziosk environments, this isn't a rare occurrence. Uh, here's some tweets here. Thanks to whatever table left a comment on the Ziosk at work and said I had, uh, yeah. Uh, assume some dude left me his number on a Ziosk comment and everyone was laughing at me. Uh, so yesterday I noticed that somebody, all right. I guess you can kind of get the idea here. Uh, Justin at the Olive Garden server who tweeted everyone was laughing at him when someone sent him their phone number. Uh, so basically this is talking about how people are just leaving comments that really are not appropriate. Um, and then, you know, the managers are printing out these scores and the comments each week, which would highlight positive comments you know, including the ones that would mention, uh, like, servers' bodies and appearances. And, you know, and, and every, and this is being posted for everyone to read. I mean, that's just not appropriate. And it's not cool. It's not cool at all. Um, And, of course, uh, Sun Capital, which owns Smoky Bones, didn't respond to repeated requests for comment. Of course not. They don't want to take accountability. Uh, let's see. Do I think anonymous feedback gives them the ability to say someone's fat without having to own up to the fact that they said it? Yeah, but we're in a social media universe today. We're in a universe that people can make anonymous comments. People can do evil and terrible things. I don't think it's appropriate. I would hope the manager would use a discretion, uh, et cetera, et cetera. While Zios sells the tablets and designs a software that makes the Zios system run, it doesn't tell restaurants how to use it. Okay, very true. The blame here is not on Zios, you know, the companies that create the tablet. All right, it is a tool. It's how that tool is being used. It's, it's like guns, weapons, all right? It's not the guns that are killing people. It's the people behind them that are using them. That's the problem. So same thing with these tablets. It's not the tablets that are the problem. It's the people that are using them. So these, they're not being used for what they're meant to be used for. Um, Zia says it's not responsible for how restaurant chains choose to use its software. I would agree. Um, the problem is not 
this is not Ziosk, it's not the tablet, it's it's the restaurant, it's it's the uh, corporations that are whatever evil scheme that they that they're coming up with to treat their employees. Um, looking to see if there's anything more in here. Uh, it's up to individual managers to make sure their locations are performing up to standards. I mean, what happened to, I mean, restaurants have been around for a long while. And restaurants were getting by before without these stupid things. So why do they need them now? I don't know. They didn't need them back then, so why do they need them now? They don't. Everybody's employment is based on these scores. It was so pressed upon the managers by upper management that sometimes our managers would just tell us to fill out the survey ourselves or flat out ask for a five-star review from the customer. Um, though the temptation was real, Anna said she could never bring herself to ask for a rating. You're already serving them. You don't want to beg them. Please help me keep my job uh, who wants to go to work with uh, anxiety like that <sighs> Levi and Levi uh, in fact questions the very notion that ZS feedback is an accurate or useful way for a business to evaluate performance to say this was a four-star experience or an eight out of ten, who the hell knows what that means? When ZS first came to an Olive Garden in 2015, we were told it would make our jobs easier. But it hasn't made the job easier. I think it's made it kind of more difficult. Because um, it's about to get even more strict. According to a new directive from corporate, managers are now instructed to email servers ZS scores to district managers once a week. If our score is below what is considered acceptable, they put us down to a two to one table section. Then after that, we move to write-ups, including termination. And uh, Darden denied that such a policy. Oh, well, yeah, of course they did. Um, after nine years at Olive Garden, he said he feels like a pretty, he said he feels like a pretty darn good server, but the ZS makes him feel like an automation that could be replaced at any time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there, there is a, there's this uh, black and white movie, silent movie called Metropolis, where the working class is depicted like robots. Very, very classic movie. And check it out. It's very unnerving, he said. I do what I can to make their visit enjoyable, but it's almost like that doesn't even count anymore. It's just a number. Our whole job is based on numbers. So... There you go. That's the article. This it this information just blew me away when when I found out about it. Um, I just figured it was just a just a survey thing that they're using just to get information. I didn't realize that people were going to be affected. And now that I know this, I'm just gonna I'm gonna five star you know five star the things all the time, you know. I don't want to sit there and be judgmental of the person who is um, waiting my table because they may be having a bad day. I mean, out of, out of, uh, I don't know, four, two weeks, all right, 14 days, they may have like one day that they just have be hap happen to have a bad day. Just bad things are just happening to them. And I just happen to catch them on that one day. And then I happen to be that one person who doesn't give them all perfect scores. And now because of me, now their hours are getting cut. Now they're not able to pay their bills. Now that one bad day is, is turning into a domino effect, which is causing more undue stress for that person. So I piss on that. I'm just going to, you know, I'm just going to give them five, five stars. 
um, all the way through. And the tip itself, which is how it has always been, the amount that you tip the server will 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 tell them if you liked their service or not. Generally, um, like the average is what it's was it like eighteen percent? I think is 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 generally the standard. Um, like somewhere between fifteen and eighteen percent is is generally like the the standard uh, percentage of tip. Um, and that's of what your bill, you know, if you're getting a discount on something, it's not off the discounted price. It's off, it's off of the price before the discount in case you're wondering. Um, so if you get like a buy one meal, get one free type of thing, you don't tip off of the discount. You, 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 you tip off of how much it would cost without that discount. Um, so yeah, so if I get great service, I'll go and I'll tip that 20%, you know, or I might bump it up a little bit just to make the, you know, just to make an even amount. Um, I try to remember to bring cash with me. So that way the servers, like they got that cash, they can take it home with them that day. You know, uh, they don't have to sit there and, and uh, cause if it's cash that they, they pretty much don't need to report that with, uh, taxes. Um, I mean, you kind of do, but, um, the, the, the money that, that if you pay on your card, that money is definitely taxed. So, um, m money that you lay down, uh, on the table is a lot more useful to a server than something that you just put on a card. Um, but I usually do something between 10 and 20 percent but i always leave something so if a server is just rude and just really nasty well then i'll leave a 10 percent tip um if it's average meh yeah, somewhere between 15 17 if it's just amazing i'll do 20 all right that is me that that's kind of my standard thing um, but as far as these computers and these survey things, I'm just going to do five stars all, the, all across the board. Um, I'm not going to let some computer determine whether or not someone gets to keep their job or be a cause of them losing shifts. That's That sucks. So anyway, that's all I've got to say and ramble about in regards to this topic. Um... I'm very interested uh, to hear what you guys have to say. Um, for those of you who have worked at restaurants, please, please, please comment and in, in the in, in in the section below. I really want to hear from you. Um, let's talk about this. Let's get share this video. Like and share this video, okay? We need to let people know about this, about this these Ziosk things. Because, hey, you know, I mean, we all got to work. We all got to work. We all got bills we got to pay. You know, it, the things that, it's just things that we, we got to do. I mean, you know, no one wants life to suck any more than it has to right <laughs> so let's get the word out and just let people know about these crappy little devices and how they're being used all right so that way we can all live a happier day and a happier week all right uh anyways i appreciate the time that you spent watching this um again let me know what you guys think. And uh, there are other videos, so please check those out. And other than that, I will see you on the next rambling video. Take care.